YouTube is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all fantastic. Subscribe, like, share around. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe right now. I need the help. A lot of you viewers aren't subscribed. I'd appreciate it. Are you guys chasing the lowest click delay mouse? Well, this is a video for you. I have six mice here. I've taken them all apart. I have soldered in a wire to the switch. We're going to be using the Alienware Reflex Monitor to test click delay and also an external Aerojuido tool to validate the monitor and also get an external reading on the click delay on these mice. Now, here we have here a low latency guide from NVIDIA, which I've mentioned before. It's definitely worth a read. It piggybacks off a website called Mouse Click Latencies. I've gone ahead and I've bought a whole bunch of mice to sort of validate this because I want to chase the lowest click delay, but also in the most perfect shape. That's kind of the end goal here. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I even went out and got the, the ROG Chakram Core, even though I know it's a horrible weight and shape just to do these tests. So I have the Rival 3. We have tested that in videos before. We have the um, G Pro Hero, which is uh, quite a good shape. I wanted to test that one. We've got the Super Light, which we have tested in a different video. But the Endgame XM1R, I know a lot of you guys were asking for this one because apparently it has a really low click delay, but we'll see about that. We'll do some tests. We have the Razer Viper 8K, which we have done tests on before, and I was very impressed with the click delay with this mouse. And then we've also got the Arog Chakram Core, which is a horrible weight and horrible shape. But according to NVIDIA and according to this website, it has the lowest click delay. Now I see NVIDIA ram down a lot of reviewers' throats to use this mouse. And I can sort of understand why, because if it has the lowest click delay, it's going to make them look really, really good in all of their tests. But we'll validate that because I've got this mouse now. So we'll see exactly what happens. Now, as far as reflex compatible mice, it doesn't really matter. If it's not compatible, it's either going to give you a database average or it's going to give you the results without the click delay. I don't know sort of why they do this, but it is what it is. It doesn't matter because we have an external tool we're going to be testing with. So guys, um, let's talk about the Asus Chakram Core. I had a really horrible time with that mouse. I got it, I put it in, I checked the latency. It was absolutely horrible out of the box, like really, really bad. And I checked and apparently I needed to update firmware. So I updated firmware and that fixed the issue really, really low click delay now. Um, and now it's actually supported with the monitor tool as well. But the Asus Armory Crate software is like a cancer on your PC. You use the proper um, you know, file to uninstall. There's a proper uninstaller you can run. It doesn't get rid of everything. Everything's still left behind. Files, folders, drivers, um, services. It, it's absolutely horrible. I genuinely want to wipe my install after installing this. It is like a cancer on the PC. I thought I'd mention that. So if you have this mouse, please update the firmware because it made a huge difference in click delay. Okay, I'm going to show you guys some photos, sort of what I've been up to roughly. Okay, so here's, uh, I guess that's XM1R and that's a G Pro Hero. I um, sold it in the um, the wire for the switches so we can get the use the external tool there. Um, I have put Tiger Arcs on um, most of these mice, um, which are really, really nice. And I've got a new mouse pad, which is really, really nice too. I've got an Artsium pad. Really, really love this thing recommendation from some of my viewers on Twitch. Um, and this is me sort of taking apart the mouse. I believe this is the XM1R. Taking it apart, um, soldering the switch, as you can see here, getting everything ready. Um, and that's sort of what sort of the result sort of looks like. Um, so we can get the external, um, yeah, external reading with the external tool to validate this. So I got a little bit uh, lazy with editing this video, so I thought I'd just do it this way. Um, this is kind of the setup that I have right now in front of me right here. Okay, and you guys can see that a little bit. As you can see, all these mice are lined up and ready to go. So these are some of the most common mice, I guess, um, and some of the like, lowest uh, click delay, or apparently, or some of these. So that's my external tool there, and we're also going to be using the inbuilt monitor tool also. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of results we get. I've decided to test with paint today and also test with Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike, we're going to be playing low, G-Sync off, um and um cap to 357 to make it consistent now as far as the paint test the paint test is just going to be at 360 fps with the compositor on counter-strike global offensive will have exclusive full screen um just so you guys know i'm on windows server here you want to be on an exclusive full screen if you're on the latest build i don't recommend using exclusive full screen believe it or not it's actually better on the latest build not using exclusive full screen just thought i'd mention that here now let's get started with the tests Got the little Arduino tool up um, 
underneath me here on the camera you can probably see it and i'm just going to quickly run over you guys kind of how i'm doing the tests but i'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me do all the tests over the next half hour or whatever it's going to take um this is a little bit of a list that i'll have and i'll just write it all in here so we can get a little bit of a conclusion at the end um so i'm going to be using paint with a compositor on here and i'm going to be using this tool um, and basically we can use both now what's annoying about the um, uh, reflex uh, tool is I have to unplug the mouse and plug it back in so we can reset all the averages okay and I want to probably do a hundred runs of each and just so you guys know where I have the um, the tool and you can actually see it on the camera here I've got it directly right next to where the um, the gray box is for the reflex tool so we can actually test both at the same time which is going to be super awesome okay so we'll get started with that so basically I'm going to, going to do this a hundred times, we'll get an average and we'll see what we come against. So I'm going to start with the slowest mice um, first from what I think and I believe the rival three is probably one of the worst that we have here. Um, so the click delay of that is quite, actually quite horrendous. So I'll do this a hundred runs and we'll see what we get. Alright so that's a result with paint. So if you see on the bottom left side of the screen we'll have a 20.4 on an average um, system latency so that's click to display latency we'll have a look at the error generator tool it's telling me 20.98 so that's about right because here's the thing um the the g-sync module is um only sort of measuring the i guess the, the crystal changes within the display whereas my external tool is actually measuring everything externally just so you guys know and also the reflex tool on the bottom left and not the external tool will only work out 20 averages so realistically it would have only worked out the last 20 clicks um as well so that's another sort of limitation with the um uh, video tool. Now I'll show you guys how I'm going to test it in Counter-Strike. Um, once I've done that I'll just simply run through all these mice and I'll, I'll show you guys. I might end up um, showing you guys me testing the Asus Chakram Core because that's supposed to be the lowest click delay which is a little bit exciting for me. I'm super excited to try that one out and we'll see what happens. So I decided to use CSGO for this test um, just because I guess it's um, relatively consistent game in the right um, map and area with the right config I guess at the end of the day. Um, I have a little like uh, executable that I'll run for this test which makes life a little bit easier. Okay, and then I just buy the M4 and I can basically just have unlimited bullets. Now my DPI is really low on this mouse here, the Rival 3. I'd just like to go into this area. Um, Peewee helped me with this one, which is great. There's lots of lighting in this area um, to test the latency. Um, and I'll press uh, the key to get the uh, little overlay if that's going to work today. Right, there we go. It's working now and I'll have to unplug the mouse and plug it back in so we can get reset and I'll reset this thing. We should be good to go to get the um, the test results. So now I'm going to click this 100 times and get a little rough average on latency. See how the max there is 32.9? So that's a bit of an error with the game engine or in general. So that's not right. So I'm going to have to start that again so we can get a good rating because that's um that's what's great about this external tool um whereas the nvidia tool it doesn't really tell you that so we should be good now there we go yeah max about 15 milliseconds might go up a little bit with this mouse but yeah that's about right so 32 was not quite right so i'm going to do this for 100 runs and we'll see, see what kind of results that we get guys okay they're the results that we've got there um on the nvidia reflex it's saying 15.2 milliseconds click the display and then on my external tool it's 15.42 so that's about right i guess you've got an extra dot two two yeah an extra dot two two um uh because we're measuring it externally so it's crazy when you think about it like a mouse can actually make quite a huge difference without doing anything else um, I believe um, with a good mouse here, we'd probably be able to get down to 10 milliseconds, maybe under. So that's literally five milliseconds shaved off just by changing mouse. Um, that's why I'm super excited to do this video. This is probably one of the worst mice that I have here, and that's why I decided to test with this one first. But there are the results there. So I don't want to bore you guys any further. I'm going to run through all these mice that I have laid out here on the table, and we'll see what kind of results we get at the end. Um, be super, super interesting. All right. Something I actually just wanted to show you guys before I finish the results here is um, I'm using the G Pro Hero now with a reflex tool on the bottom left that you can see um, if the mouse isn't fully supported it'd give you a database average so the database average here is 2.6 milliseconds so down the bottom our average system latency is 12.4 according to NVIDIA but if you look at our reflex tool uh, sorry our external tool it says 13.23 so you can't exactly trust their database um, average because the click delay, that's not like true, true click delay. They're just giving you a rough average. So I thought I'd just mention that and show you here. Also, 
to mention it's crazy because we've just changed a mouse and we've just shaved off two milliseconds by doing nothing but plugging in a different mouse which is super crazy when you really think about it at the end of the day so that's just something to keep in mind i will write down database average in the results because there will be some times where you'll see oh wait that's way lower but it's actually not because it's not really properly measuring the click delay which is actually super annoying so yeah anyway i'll continue on with the tests I felt like I'm pausing this video. Um, this is the XM1R um, and I'm actually really disappointed. Now, um, guys from um, XMR guys who make this mouse, if you're watching this video, can you please hurry up and do the software to allow me to change the debounce time because you can on the XM1, but you can't on the XM1R. Um, I'm not going to go out and buy an XM1 just to do this all over again. Um, it's ridiculous. Uh, please release the software so I can change the bounce time because this is literally running just as slow as the um, the Steel Series Rival 3. This is really disappointing. Now, it's not supported by the um, Reflex tool as you can see here. It will just say unsupported. So we've got the external tool to sort of validate what the actual real readings are. Um, and we're looking at about 5 millisecond click delay. Um, if if you kind of like work it out roughly like that so that's really really disappointing um, a lot of you guys wanted me to get this mouse to test it because apparently it has super low click delay i'm that's that's the result there i'm actually kind of disappointed but um yeah i will do a follow-up video if x uh, xm1 do end game gear should i say guys if you release that software i'll do a follow-up video and then we'll test the click delay with it um i really like this weight and shape i actually think um, as far as as an engineer's perspective, or should I say, I've only been a qualified um, auto electrician and mechanic. I really like this mouse. I like the shape. I like the weight. I like the way it feels, the shell, um, and taking it apart. It was just super simple, clean, and nice. Really nice mouse, but really need that software to change the debounce time because this looks really disappointing here so i'll do a follow-up video if that software eventually does come out for it and um for the record i have updated firmware firmware on this mouse too just so you guys know i haven't been able to test it before updating the firmware apparently it fixed double click issues so that could have added delay as well um doing the firmware update i'm not sure but we'll see what happens i'll do a follow-up video on this mouse and we'll see what happens all right ladies and gentlemen we've finally got the results here now, something I want to mention here, um, I seem to have sort of worse results with GeForce Experience and this overlay over the um, whole game um, and um, sort of slightly, well, I wouldn't say inconsistent results, but just higher results than usual. So that's something to keep in mind. If you've seen my other click delay test, I didn't have any of that running and I was just using the external tool. And also, weirdly enough, I feel like I have more consistent results with G-Sync on. And I guess that's probably got to do with like, you know, uh, a little bit of screen tearing quite possibly um maybe um you know affecting the results they should average out with the 100 tests which is why the external tool is um absolutely fantastic also keep in mind the temperature of the room can affect the results so um if you've seen the other videos of me testing the um razor by itself or the logitech by itself um in previous videos the temperature of the room and the temperature of the panel can be affected so these are the results we've got here um i don't want you to entirely trust um the reflex uh, tool entirely because you're going to be more likely having a better better time trusting the external tool so what i really want you to look at here is i think we should more or less probably look at the origino tool and look at the game so the rival 3 about 15 milliseconds delay um the g pro hero uh 13.23 on average with 100 takes now another thing i need to mention the reflex tool will only measure like the last 20 averages so whereas um you know like i'll give you an example so the last 20 averages the reflex will do whereas the origino tool will do like it's doing 100 averages so that's something to keep in mind too uh 20 averages in my opinion isn't enough you need 100 so what i really want you to look at is so the origino tool with the actual game game engine itself so 15.4 and then the g pro hero 13.23 xm1r really disappointed with that and that's also confirmed um, in paint as well. Um, yeah, I think we really need the um, software for the debounce time because that click delay is pretty much uh, almost on par with the Rival 3. It's it's pretty bad. Um, it's not very, very good for click delay. Super light results is actually super clean and nice. Um, they, they were pretty nice. The vibe for 8K seems to be the king here. Now, what got a little bit confusing to me is the Chakram Core was a little bit disappointing in the game 
um, but then in paint it seemed to be a tiny little bit lower so that confused me a little bit that was a little bit inconsistent so um, this is sort of what I expected to see although I thought the chakram core would be a little bit lower so what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to install Valorant use a completely different game engine and we'll go head to head um, with the Viper 8K versus the chakram core and we'll see which one is better I have a feeling the Viper 8K might um, come ahead just I guess because maybe higher polling rate and also the optical switches I believe are faster and probably more consistent but we'll see what happens um, so that, that'll be super interesting I'm getting Valorant up and going now but they're the results that you see here like I said before and I need to say this again um, don't entirely trust the reflex tool it only does the last 20 averages okay guys so more or less please look at the Arduino tool um, that's the results that you need to be sort of looking at um, yeah but anyway I'll get Valorant sorted these are the results that I thought I'd get um, and I'll see if the Viper 8K will beat the Chakram Core in um, Valorant. Maybe a more consistent engine, should I say. Probably a lot better optimized than the Source engine. Also, I'll mention that I'm going to turn GeForce Experience off entirely so it doesn't um, at all affect sort of the um, has it running in the background because that, that has affected my results a little bit because I can get way lower click delay um, within Paint with the Razer um, Viper 8K and I'm assuming that's just the, the GeForce overlay running there as well. So we'll get Valorant up and running. Um, or it'll be low, capped at 357 with G-Sync off um, and it will be without um, GeForce experience without any kind of overlay and I'll just use the external tool. Viper 8K versus Chakram Core. All right guys, I'm in Valorant. I'm doing the test with the Razer Viper 8K. Right now, as you can see, I just had a bit of an error there. So I'm going to that because 44 is not right this game engine seems much more consistent um to do uh just in general um which is really really nice so we're just going to test this versus the asus chakram core i want to see which one's better that's what i'm really interested in here and that's i guess for me personally that's the whole point of this video for me to see which one's the best but this is definitely a much more consistent um, game engine. I probably should have used this game engine, but I just felt like using CSGO, but it should be fine. Averages always work themselves out at the end of the day. So yeah, we got Vanguard up, ready to roll, and we'll see what kind of results we get. This is looking actually super low where things should be. Um, also not having the video overlay, I swear it's affecting the results a little bit too. So as you can see here, this happens sometimes. I'll get an inconsistency. See how the max went up to 31 milliseconds? That's not quite right. Oh, I reset that. That's what's great about this tool. If I see that the max is too high, it's not consistent. So I'll get these uh, tests up and running and we'll see what the results are. All right, guys, that's what we've got. Uh, 10.22 on average, super low, and it's exactly where it should be. So that's the Vi Razer Viper 8K. That's super nice and low. Now I'm going to pl plug in the Asus Chakram Core and we'll see what results we get with that. And they're the results there we've got for the Asus Chakram Core 10.23 on average. So I guess you could call that um, a tie at the end of the day. That's kind of interesting. I thought it would kind of be lower. Part of me wants to run these tests over and over and over again. But every time I do, I always end up getting the same results. So um, that's uh, super interesting. The um, Viper 8K versus Asus Chakram Core with the new firmware. Um, pretty much it gets a tie. So there you have it, guys. Um... In my opinion, I think the Viper 8K is a much better mouse because um, even though 8K isn't stable in games, you can bump it down to 4K and you still have the low click delay because um, that's been confirmed that changing the polling rate on that mouse doesn't affect the click delay. It seems super low and consistent. And I think optical switches sort of are the future, are the way to go. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I guess I came to the conclusion that I wanted to come to. Um, subscribe, like, share around. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Take care of yourselves. Bye.